Um, mission Sunday. So the missions team is all about not just um, global missions, but also looking at what is God doing in the land of Kona and the big island and how can we participate in that. But it, we also, as we um, get closer and closer to sending out Bam and Helen and Ave, we're also looking beyond our island to other islands, but even to other countries and other lands. We have personally been places where We've walked with people who've never heard the name of Jesus. There's no churches on the corner. Um, there's lots of temples, lots of different things, lots of shrines and things like that, but they have literally never heard the name of Jesus ever in their life. So um, it is my honor to introduce our missions uh, Sunday today, and we're gonna have Destiny come up and share and something that, yes. <laughs> Something that I love about Destiny is not only is she called to be a missionary here in Kona, um, she's also called globally as well. So she's going to be sharing about a local ministry here that she is super plugged into and transforming the lives here in Kona, and then also where God has called her outside of America. So here you go. Hi, everybody. Um, it's good to be back. I just came back from Mazlan, Mexico, and that was wild. Um, but I would like to just, um, for those that, uh, there's a lot of new faces here, which is amazing. I just see it expanding. It's so beautiful. Uh, my name is Destiny Kule Masters. I'm born and raised here. I went to Calique High School. So if anyone's from Konawina, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, um, I work with this uh, local ministry called Holo Holo, and their heart is here for Hawaii. And so they run a bunch of local ministries, and um, for example, they helped a lot to serve with the Konawina football team by running their banquets and organizing football camps here in Hawaii for the boys here, along with um, doing soccer camps as well for the youth here as well. And uh, we like to run a bunch of uh, camps for the youth here. Um, some of them are called crews. And there's one that we'll be heading out to next week in Kohala called Camp Lokahi. And um, we also, we just really believe in that transformation takes place in serving your community. And if we can't serve in our community here, how can we do it out in the nations? And so the heart is uh, for the people here in Hawaii, and so is my heart. And uh, we also, because of that, we only run a DTS once a year for six months. Other schools, they constantly run DTS. But because of the serving in the local community, our heart is also to raise up people from here to go out. And this year, I'm just really excited because there's five girls from um, the islands. There's one from um, Hilo. She went to Kamehameha School. And then there's a girl from Molokai. And then a, one from Kailua Kona. And then two from Oahu. And I think the most beautiful thing I've heard um, in this last uh, trip, which was like such a gift to hear, is one of the girls shared to me saying, Destiny, like all I thought was I was a girl from Molokai, but I see that God has so much more. And um, I don't know why I'm nervous. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, just to highlight, I think, um, so yeah, in this DTS, it's a six-month course. And the first phase is like around three months. So we teach and we di disciple young youth how to hear the voice of God and what it looks like to walk in your original design. Because we are a firm believer that God still moves like he does in Acts, that he gives us power and authority to... Um, overcome obstacles of this earth that through the blood of jesus we aren't victims we're victorious and so just showing these kids that uh not kids these youth that god has so much more for them than what we think and his plans are good and he is sovereign and that what the enemy used for evil he will turn it for good and so with that we took them which is like very rare because we normally don't take uh, students out during lecture phase but we heard the voice of the lord and that's one thing i can just say i honor uh, my leader uncle paul is is he's very holy spirit led and so he's very apostolic too so you never know what we're going to do one minute you're running a camp one minute you're doing like snorkel day with the community here in hawaii he's just looking for places to serve 
And so with that, he heard we needed to go to Mexico. And as like staff and leadership, we all got that confirmation. So what we did is we went to um, Mazalan, Mexico, and we ended up going out and evangelizing in the third largest carnival in the world. And if people, if you guys don't know what carnival is, it's basically, it's part of the Catholic um, calendar, and it's four days set apart in the religion where all the carnal sins are forgiven. So you can just go out, and you can just party, hook up with whoever you want, do all the drugs in the world, and the Lord won't see you. And so the base there has this big ministry where they take... Um, it's super cool how they set it up. They have like the miracles team. They use prophetic drawings to speak to people. They have an intercession team and they have like the evangelist team. And so in the meanwhile, where the evangelists are going out, they have the people in the prayer room interceding for the behalf of Mazalan and the people who are going out. And it was just so radical because I've seen, I have stats here, let me just pull that up. But we've seen throughout the course, 1,071 in the four days receive Jesus. 758 hear the gospel. We witnessed 34 baptism, 29 healings, 530 coffees given, because they used a coffee shop to help preach the gospel to people, because it's about relationship as well. And 25 prophetic art pieces and 803 hugs. Never underestimate a hug. <laughs> Yeah, and so with this being said is I'm just super excited because never ever I even thought I would be like, God, I'm going to do full-time missions. Like growing up here in Kailua Kona and being from Calcahe, like that was, I didn't even know that was a thing. But back in 2018 is when I did my DTS and God began to show me that destiny, like it's more than a religion. I have so much more. And I remember being in a room and I felt so overwhelmed because it's like overwhelmed in the sense of how sovereign and how good God is and how he really does set us free. And not even with that, I was in rooms I never thought I would ever be in. And that is by only the goodness and the mercy of God. And so I'm very overwhelmed because this was just, I just came back. So God still heals. He does crazy things. I've seen people use prophetic giftings to minister to people, and in just one moment, they're like, there's no way you can know this, only God. And it's in that create, and I believe God is moving, and he's operating in that power, but he's just asking for obedience. And to just trust him and to just step in it. And I'm like crying right now because even my flesh is scared, like honestly. But I can't deny what I've seen, and I believe he's doing the work here in Hawaii too. And so, yeah. Okay, bye. <laughs> um, I love this girl, and it makes me want to join her DTS because I just want to do all these things with her. Um, but we were singing the song, like, We Need to Move, and I've, I've heard Destiny's testimony. She's also sat on our lanai and shared her heart with me. And I feel like when God moves on your heart, it doesn't, you just don't stay st stationary, you also move. And I'm just so like honored just to see and hear like how God is moving you. Um, I don't think she expressed like how much she has given up to be where she's at. Um, if your heart was stirred today um, with what Destiny is doing and you want to see how you can partner with her, whether prayer or finances, because she's pretty much given up everything just to give her life to this land and beyond, Please um, see either one of us in the back. We'll be hanging out if you want to hear more about what Holo Holo is. Uh, we'd love to share, especially Destiny, because she knows more than I do. But um, I just wanted to pray for her. Lord, we just thank you for our sister. I thank you for her calling in her life. And I thank you for the lives that she is going to be transforming just out of obedience, one step in front of the other, um, one day at a time. One yes, as you speak, uh, uh, as you ask her to do something for her. I, um, I, Father, you are so good. I just pray your provision over her life, Lord, um, that she would know that everything that she needs comes from you. Um, yeah, I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would guide her each way, that you would um, give her words to speak over these five young women who are from the islands, um, just being filled up by you and empowered by you. And... Um, being rooted in identity over these next six months. 
a blessed destiny. I pray um, your hand upon her as, you, as she goes out into everything that you have called her to go out to. Yes, God. Yes, God. Let's give it up. Yes. Hey, uh, Destiny, really fast. Um, you know, we, we, were, we were just, I was just sitting there, and my wife and I were looking at each other, and we just feel that it's important that you pray in part an impartation of God's anointing on us as a church ohana that we would have that heart to go. Can you do that? Can you pray for us? Allow the Lord to speak to you? God, just receive, church, just receive the Lord, what the Lord has for you. Yeah, Father, you're just so good, Lord. And Lord, we just recognize that you're not just a God of a religion, Lord, that you are active and you're alive and that you're moving. <coughs> and Lord, and you just ask for a childlike faith, Lord. And so I pray that, Lord, that even walking obedience in the moment that it doesn't feel good, that you are in the midst, and that even when it doesn't make sense, Lord, I know that you're a God who makes a way. Mm. And that even in the hard times, it's because you're drawing us closer to you, Lord, because your desire is to be able to move through us, Lord. Father, I just pray that there will be a day we will see heaven come down to earth, Lord and that we can all testify of your goodness. And I know that there is a purpose in each and every one here, no matter young or old, Lord. I believe like this year we're gonna see healings, we're gonna see radical prophecies come to pass, and we're gonna see the church move in a way that we've never seen, Lord. But it takes obedience and it takes a heart that's willing to say yes, Lord. And I just pray that we'll have a revelation of who you are and who your kingdom is, not only on Sunday or the titles or what we walk in, Lord, but just knowing who you are. And Father, I pray for a hunger in the hidden places like never before. Yes, God. And Lord, I even pray that we will understand that for the, the lamb that was slain, Lord, may he get his reward, but let us start within us too, Lord. Yes, God. So I just thank you. For the single purpose of showing a dying world his love and grace. Yes. Which begs the question, how will the world know that God is real? Well, just look at his church. Just look at his church. We are the church. And when I look in this room, I see potential. I, I see hope, I see testimonies, real people that have been changed by the power of God, real people that have rad been radically set free, real people that experience God's love and they're never turning back. Listen, there is not one story in this room that doesn't matter, and this is just a side note. I, I gotta just say this, I feel like it. Your voice matters. Destiny, your voice matters. Damien, your voice matters. Your story needs to be told so that others who need to hear about God's love can hear and experience him in a real way. I'm not talking about a fake way, a real way. When they see you, they see who? Jesus. Never forget that, that your story is his story, and nobody on the face of this planet can take away that story. Amen? Yeah. We're the church. Now listen carefully. I want you to understand something before we go any further. Notice that Jesus said, I will build my church. I will build my church. Whose church is it? Jesus. Who's going to build it? Jesus. Whose idea is it? Jesus. It's Jesus' church. And as we go through this short uh, teaching series, literally for three weeks, I want you to keep Jesus' words, I will build my church in the front of the mar our minds. Can you do that? Keep it in front of your mind. Because his words are going to be the foundation for why we feel led to talk about this topic. And today, as we open up the scriptures, oh, I'm so excited to talk about Hebrews 10. I would want us to step back and just kind of look at God's church from his perspective, because he views his church a certain way, and he has an opinion about it, and his opinion is the right opinion, by the way, um, because it's so easy, you know, I, I think about just to come to church, and we can have this consumer mindset, right, what we need, what others need, what can the church give me, what can I get out of the church, how, you know, can the church serve me, me, my needs, my needs, my needs. But this morning, if we could just roll back the curtains of heaven and imagine that we have a, a 30 foot thousand view looking down on how God sees a church, you know, what does he look at? 
What does he look at? And so Hebrews chapter 10, this is our scripture up here on the screen. We're going to read it nice and loud together. Ready? Go. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up, meeting together as some in the habit are doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Now, according to history, the letter of Hebrews uh, was written to the church during an intense time of persecution, around 68 AD, so 68 years later after the death of Christ. And history records that Nero was was Rome's emperor. Uh, He was a crazy man. He was a psychopathic, right? I mean, he burnt down Rome and accused all the Christians for doing it. He, uh, He would literally light up the sky by setting Christians on fire on crosses. Um, He would put Christians in gladiator rings and and watch them be put to death by lions and other gladiators. So if you happen to be a Christian, think about this, if you happen to be a Christian during this time period, you were constantly scrutinized and persecuted for your life. Because you say the name of Jesus, you could be put to death. And it's here that the author really just just pulls out some real deep reasons why. It's here we find out why the church of Jesus Christ needs each other. It's here we find three reasons why church matters. And in your notes, you can fill these in the blanks. This is the first reason, because Jesus died for it. The second reason, because we all need it. And the third reason, because you are a necessary part of it. And so for the next three weeks, what we're going to do, we're going to unpack these reasons, three reasons of why church. And for the sake of time today, I only got about 10 more minutes. The first reason, why did Jesus die for the church? I think that's a really important thing to ask. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, it says, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope, say hope, hope. that we affirm. What is the hope that we affirm? What is the hope that the first century Christians that this letter was written to affirmed. Well, here's the hope, that Jesus Christ, he died on a cross, he was buried in a tomb, and then on, on, on the third day, he was raised from the grave. And because of that, we can experience eternal life. See, that means regardless uh, of your day, good or bad, if you got in an argument with your wife or, or maybe an argument with your husband or maybe you know, school didn't go so well, no matter what your day is, you can go to bed tonight and lay yourself asleep knowing that if you don't wake up tomorrow morning, you will wake up in heaven and see Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and spend eternity with him. You, that, that's a guarantee. Because if you committed your life to him and found faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, Pastor Heather saying it so beautifully, I have decided to follow Jesus the cross I'm going towards. If you have believed by faith in the finished work of the cross, you have security in the life to come. Don't ever question that. The enemy wants you to not believe that. Oh, you don't have a life. Oh, yes, you do. The church of Jesus Christ is alive, and that church is the hope we affirm. Never forget that. And if we go back a few verses in Hebrews chapter 10, it really clarifies this hope in verse 19 up here on the screen. And it says this, and so dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter um, heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus, amen? Because of the blood of Jesus. Notice this next phrase, by his death, by his death, Jesus opened up a new giving way, a life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. Wow, there's a lot of Old Testament imagery here which we don't have time to go through, but basically on its surface, you know what it's saying? Jesus died so that we can have access to Father God and have eternal life. That's the promise of God that you and I will never, never die or perish. We will live. That's the hope. And so when you think about the death of Jesus, let me ask you, what what do you think motivated Jesus to die on a cross, to lay down his life. What do you think motivated him? Right? Yeah, he, all kinds of answers, right? He knew that we were lost without him. He knew that hell is a real place. He talked about hell a lot in the scriptures. And he knew that if people didn't know him, he knows that people will spend eternity in hell. Now, we don't have a lot of time to talk about that, but there's a heaven and hell. There, there's a choice that we have on this planet Earth to make, to spend eternity with God or not. 
And I want to be in the place where I'm going to be in the presence of God. I don't want to be absent from God. Hell, right? He knows that. He also knows we need forgiveness of sin. He knows that we make mistakes. He knows that we're going to make mistakes in the future. He knows our whole life planned out before us. He knows we need grace. So that's something I think that's what motivated Jesus, right? Or maybe to be made right with God because he knew that we were no longer, we were, we were enemies of God. So we need to be made right. But one thing that stands out during my uh, prayer time and I can think, that I can think of that really motivated Jesus to die on a cross in order to give us hope is this, his great love for us. His great love for us. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave Jesus. The word love here means agape. It's an unconditional love. It's a sacrificial love. Jesus, uh, God gave Jesus because he loves us. And when Jesus Christ hung on the cross, he thought of us. He thought of you. He thought of me. And according to Jesus, he sacrificed his life because true love is laying your life down for another person. And he really demonstrated that. That's the hope. Let me ask you, what would you do for love? What would it cost you for love? Would you do anything for love? Anything? Anything. You know, quick story, when I was in second grade, I gotta share this, I remember uh, my friend uh, telling his girlfriend, second graders, now just to remind you, we're second graders, okay? If you can remember when you're in second grade, oh dear Lord, I'm right there with you. I remember my friend telling his girlfriend, hey, you know what, I'll do anything for you. You know, if that means jumping off a cliff, sweetheart, I will do that for you. Baby, if that means standing in front of a bullet, I will do that for you. I will spare my life, baby, because I love you. (laughs) And I'm like looking at him, I'm like, wow, second grade boy going, whoa, you are amazing. First time ever heard, I will step in front of a bullet for you. And so later on I asked him, I said, anything? And he said, yeah, anything for love. Oh, okay, so the next day we were standing in line in the cafeteria, and his girlfriend came up to him, and I'll never forget this, you know, he said, and she said to him, as we're standing there, and she said, I know, you know, remember the other day when you said you would do anything for love for me? And she said this, would you please sit with me at the girl table? And I just remember this panic came upon my friend, and he was just like, oh my gosh, my life is over, right? Have you ever felt like that at the crossroad of all emotions in life? You're up and down, you're wondering, what decision do I make? Do I sit with the guys? Do I go with the girls and be embarrassed for my whole life? And I'll never forget my, my friend, man. He, he looked at her and he said, I can't do that. Oh my gosh, well that day they broke up at lunch. (laughs) And I gave my good friend a high five, like, man, thank you for being with the boys, man. Thank you, man. (laughs) Second graders. I mean, what do we know about love in second grade? Come on, man. Right? What do we know about sacrifice in second grade? And I think, you know, even though we might be adults, we're still kids trapped in bigger bodies. Would you agree? We're, we're just big kids trapped in bigger bodies, and we still say things like that. And at the core, I really wonder if we really understand what we're saying when it comes to love. It's more than, I love you, baby. Love means sacrifice. It costs. And would we do anything for it? Right? It's like the famous meatloaf song in the 80s how many remember that okay and for all you 80 fans i got you right here meatloaf (laughs) well i don't know i don't know about that um um, i won't do that i won't do that um man thank you I would do anything. No, 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 no. Hey, hey, I know. That's my addition. Thank you. I'm on worship team now. Hey, listen. Um, no, but think about this. He says, I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. Really? Is that real love? Because according to the Jesus that I know, that he would do that. 
And he did do that. He would say that real love in its purest form is sacrifice. It's that. One thing that Jesus ultimately exampled for us, his death on the cross. And for followers of Jesus Christ, let me tell you something, the invitation is still the same. Will we do that? Whatever that is, will we follow Jesus? Will we go all the way for him? Will we love like him? Will we lay our lives down for our fellow brothers and sisters in the church? Because according to Jesus in John chapter 15, verse 13, up here on the screen, there's no greater love than, the, uh, than this, than he who lays life down for another brother or sister or one's friends. And so the invitation still remains the same. And if we accept this invitation, let me, say, let me tell you something. There's a couple things that we need to know about um, this walk with God, about coming to church, being with the church. There's some things that we have to understand. And on the bottom of your notes, really quick, fill these in. We're going to close with this. If I can invite the worship team up. This is what we need to know. You cannot separate Jesus and the church. You can't love Jesus and not love his bride. V vice versa. You can't love the church and not love Jesus. Jesus and the church are inseparable. The Bible says if we're called to love as Christ loved us, we must be about doing that. So what does this practically mean? And, and there's a couple things I wrote down. This means I cannot say I love Jesus, but I don't like the people in the church. I can't say nice words about Jesus and then backbite his bride. Oh, I'm, now I'm talking. I have plenty of stories of people backbiting the church. I can't worship Jesus on Sunday and then complain about my church Monday through Saturday. I can't do it. My spirituality needs to align with my beliefs and behaviors. What I say I believe, I must do. Otherwise, what am I? I'm a hypocrite. I say one thing and I do another. There's a quote by Gandhi, and Gandhi was a Hindu leader in India who helped liberate God, the Indian people. And I use this quote carefully because it's one of those quotes that just hits you right at the gut. I have to use it carefully. But up here on the screen, Gandhi said, I like your Christ, I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike Christ. Ouch. How do we change this perception of Gandhi? How do we change perceptions of maybe what others might think about Christians? Us. Maybe you've heard similar things, and just to be honest, that maybe you've heard the church is judgmental, right? We can go on and on, the political, the church is selfish, the church is two-faced, the church is not a safe place for me and my family. How do we change this perception? Well, here it is, this is what we gotta do. It starts with us. It starts with every single person in this room making a change. It starts with us by loving our brothers and sisters because if we cannot love our brothers and sisters in the church first, what makes us think that we're gonna love other people? Jesus died for the church, his bride. So that means all the squirrely Christians out there, how many are squirrely Christians? Okay, how many are weird Christians? It's okay, we're all weird. All the squirrely Christians out there, you know who they are, you know, but you know what, you gotta love them by faith. You gotta love them. They're a part of God's family. They love Jesus, but they do weird things, right? They are his church. We are all different. The bride of Christ consists of many different personalities. Many introverts, extroverts, all kinds. And I'm so thankful that I'm not like you, and you're probably thankful that you're not like me. Can you imagine if we were all the same? We would just be boring like some robots. Diversity in God's kingdom is the church. All races, nationalities, and tribes. And the linchpin that holds us all together is Jesus and our love for one another. I'm gonna close with this verse. Let's say it together up here on the screen. John 13, 35. Ready? Go. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one 
another. I asked earlier, how will the world know that God is real? Just look at the church. How we love each other will show the world that God is real. And they'll want that. They'll want that. And they say, oh, that's, that's what I want. That's the real deal. Amen. I want to pray for us. Go ahead and close your eyes. Put away your notes. This morning, I got my first call. If you came to church this morning, you say, Pastor, I, I want to believe in Jesus Christ. Maybe um, you never made the, the decision to follow Jesus. I want to make sure I give you an opportunity to follow Jesus, that you have decided to follow him the rest of your life, and that, that you believe that he died on a cross for you, and that in your heart you know that you are forgiven because of what he has done, and that he calls you a new child. If you want Jesus in your life, I want to pray for you. And we have a church family that loves you and wants to pray for you. So if that's you, you say, you know, Pastor, I want Jesus. Go ahead and just raise your hand with every eye closed and head bowed. Just a spirit of, of prayer and worship and just um, per, uh, personal space with Jesus right now. Yeah, sir, I see your hand in the back. Young man, I see your hand too. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the work that you're doing in these lives. Lord, I said, you know what, Jesus, I want to follow you all the days of my life. Why do we come to church? Because we believe in the power of Jesus Christ to save our lives, to change us from the inside out. So God, I pray a confirmation over these that said yes to you this morning. Bless my brothers and sisters. Lord, we give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, church, this is what I want to do. A fun little exercise to really spice it up. Yeah. I feel like the Lord wants us to do this. This is so important. For us to kind of gather before we're dismissed into a big circle. Not outside, but inside here. And it might go outside the, the, um, the, the uh, hang, uh, overhang here. But let's all come together and let's hold hands. And that, don't, not yet, not yet. And when we do, I'll give you some more instruction. But I, I, I feel like the Lord wants us to see each other. Can we do that? So let's all kind of, do, you don't stack your chairs. Just kind of just stand. Let's kind of do this together. I know we can do it. doing yeah. yes we did it okay can everyone hear me okay out there oh yeah and if you're are watching online we join hands with you as well we love you and so as you can see we're all standing here as a church um, there's a quote here up on the screen I wanted to fire it up here it's the last one fired up church is not something we go to but check this, but something we belong to. So as you hold hands, I want you to look around this room and look at every person that you can possibly see and you'll notice different backgrounds. Some are tall, some are skinny, like me, hopefully, uh, if you're unskinny. Um, some are short, some have brown hair, some have light hair. We're all different. but. In God's eyes, we're family. We're brothers and sisters. This is God's kingdom. And as a church, Ohana, I, I, I never want you to forget this moment as you hold hands with one another and as we worship, that God is calling us to do this life together. He's calling us to reach Kona together. He's calling us to reach the world for Jesus Christ together. And never forget that you belong here, home, Ohana. So as we sing this song, Pastor Ben, let's just worship together. Just, you can hold hands or you can pray for each other. So.
Yes, God. So as you look around, maybe God might give you the courage to walk across the room and say hi to somebody. You see their face. Maybe you've never met them before. That's your brother and sister in Christ. And one day in heaven, we'll all gather together, all tribes, all backgrounds, young, old, worshiping Jesus. You want to go and share me? No? All right, let's just go ahead and pray. I want to pray for us and uh, pray for the person on your right and your left. And uh, let's just close this time in, a, in a, a time of prayer. And I sense too that the Lord, if there's anything um, maybe you came to church with and you just feel like, man, I've never been a part of a church like this. Maybe you've been hurt in church. Maybe, maybe it hasn't been the easiest road for you. As you hold hands with your, your neighbor, Know that this is family and, and this is a place of safety and wholeness and healing for you. So, Father, I thank you, God, for our morning as we worship you, Jesus. You are um, front and center, Lord. And, God, we acknowledge you as our Lord and King, Lord. Um, and as a body of Christ, Lord, we hold hands with one another. Lord, declaring your praises, declaring your glory, declaring your goodness and your grace. Lord, we, all, we cannot say thank you enough for all that you have done for us. And Lord, as we hold hands, Lord, I pray, Lord, for anyone that's on our right and our left, Lord, whatever background, wherever they come from, maybe they've been hurt in church, maybe they, uh, uh, so a pastor said something or a leader said something and they're wounded and they're hurting, God, I pray that you would heal, Lord, their hearts, Lord. And Lord, as we just lift each other up, God, as a, uh, as a family, we pray that you would give us courage, courage, Lord, to go out and be the light, God, that you have called us to be, to be the city on the hill, God, that's supposed to uh, shine and represent you, God. Lord, I pray a blessing on each and every person, God, each and every family, Lord, that you would just wrap your arms around them, God, and remind them that they belong to you, Jesus, and they belong to your church. And Lord, I pray that you would give each and every person in this room a greater love for your church, a greater love for the brothers and sisters here, God. We give you all the glory and all the praise. And we all said, amen, 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 amen. 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 So Amen. Good. Amen. Good. Pastor Jean, hold on, hold on, guys. We got we got Pastor Jean here. He wants to say something.
Yeah, let's give it up. Thank you guys. God bless you. Have a great week. Have a great week.